Ladies and gentlemen, today we're covering why a 50-50 weight distribution is not ideal, despite what you may have been told. We're gonna be using some marshmallows and skewers to prove that point, at least to illustrate it. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard, I know I've heard many times from car reviewers or from marketing materials that a 50-50 weight distribution is perfect and ideal. And I understand why we say that, right? Because if a car is cornering at a constant speed on a constant radius turn, then yes, 50-50 is gonna allow for maximum grip at all four corners, all four wheels. You're gonna have an equal level of, uh, of traction, which is great for an equal speed, equal radius corner. However, generally speaking, when we're driving and when we're on the racetrack, you're not taking a corner that's gonna be constant speed or constant radius, right? You're decelerating as you approach the corner and you're accelerating as you exit the corner. Now, generally speaking, a lot of sports cars are rear wheel drive because there are many advantages to that. And for a rear wheel drive sports car, you actually want a slight rear bias to your weight distribution, not too much, right? All things being equal, if you have a uh, forward weight distribution, your car is more likely to give way to understeer. And if you have a rearward weight distribution, your car is more likely to give way to oversteer. Now, you can kind of see these uh, these behaviors in older vehicles, right? Look at older Porsche 911s as an example, Widowmakers. With improvements in technology over the decades, there are obviously many other factors that are going into a car's oversteer and understeer behavior, and car manufacturers can compensate for any inherent deficiencies or biases of a uh, certain layout. Now let's say you have a perfect 50-50 weight distribution. As you approach a corner and start braking, maybe you're doing a little bit of trail braking, you're trying to turn with those front wheels, there's too much weight over those front tires they're gonna be overwhelmed while the rear tires, because there is less weight over them, because as you brake, right, you're getting more of that weight transferred forward, they're not gonna have their maximum grip level. So in this situation, we see why 50-50 is not ideal, right? Now similarly, as you get on the throttle at corner exit, you're gonna transfer some of that weight to the rear, but not as much weight versus if you had a rear bias to your weight distribution. Now, if we take those two same scenarios and have a vehicle that has a slight rearward weight distribution, look what happens. When you get on the brakes approaching a corner, you're not going to approach closer to 50-50-50 because now your weight is transferred forward. So let's say you had 40, 60, 40 in the front, 60 in the rear. And as you start braking, you're now getting closer to 50-50. So all four tires are gonna have a more even braking force. You're gonna have a more effective braking force because all four tires can brake more effectively rather than just the front two ones being overwhelmed and the rear ones not being able to maximize their grip. Now, when you start exiting the corner and you push that weight rearward in your rear wheel drive vehicle, you're gonna get more traction over those rear tires, more grip as you roll onto the throttle and exit the corner. So there are inherent advantages to a slight rear bias. What I think people don't appreciate enough is the polar moment of inertia meaning how close is the weight to the pivot point? Now, if you've driven a mid-engine car like a Porsche Cayman, you'll notice how eager it is to change directions, how sharp it feels, how balanced it feels. And that's largely because of that tighter polar moment of inertia. So it's not just weight distribution because these two both have quote unquote perfect 50-50 weight distributions. This one has the weight on the far front and far rear, whereas this one has a very tight polar moment of inertia. This is like a Porsche Cayman. This one is not as willing to rotate. This one is very willing to rotate because the weight is closer to that pivot point. Now again, both of those have the same 50-50 perfect weight distribution, but the tighter polar moment of inertia actually gives way to how eager and willing it is to rotate. And that's it, my friends. That's why 50-50 is not necessarily perfect or even always the best. But hey, I'm not an engineer. So why don't you guys comment below, tell me why I'm wrong. Let's teach each other something. Much love, my friends. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next one.